This is Rochelle Rizzi with LaVray Noor, and today I'm here with Gina Adams, CEO and founder of Wearology. And she has an amazing product, Buttons to Button, and I can't wait to have her tell her story. I really want to dive into her true north and how she started, and I'll let her introduce herself, and we'll dive into some of the entrepreneurial um, chapters of her journey, and I think that she's very relatable, and I know you'll all love her as much as I do. Gina, hi. Good morning. Oh, thank you so much. That's a great intro. It's wonderful to be here and in the comforts of our own home. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for this opportunity to meet your viewers. It's awesome. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And talk to them about how you got started. I think your True North story is just one for the books. So talk to us about your inspiration and, and what got you here. Sure. So I um, am from Michigan. I grew up just south of Grand Rapids and went to Michigan State. Um, after I graduated, I lived out in Colorado for about 10 years. And at that time, I used to volunteer at the Breckenridge Outdoor Educational Center, teaching people with disabilities how to ski. And I was working at the time for the North Face and really have a true appreciation for functional apparel and just could witness the need for specific clothing for people with disabilities, um, clothing made for able-bodied individuals like you and I, they just, they don't fit people that are either like in wheelchairs or have um, special needs. And so fast forward, I ended up um, moving to New York and working for J. Crew, and, you know, really was involved more in the apparel industry. And and loved it. But when I moved back to Michigan to raise my family, it was about that time that my stepfather contracted Parkinson's and witnessing the impact of that devastating disease, both emotionally as well as physically, um, it really was gut-wrenching, of course. And and I started looking for solutions to help him regain some levels of independence, you know, when he could no longer carry out activities that you and I take for granted, frankly. Like, you know, if we're getting dressed in the morning, my mind's already racing on a million other things. And yet this was something that would take an extraordinary amount of energy and time. And then there's that ripple effect on my mom. And you know, there's, so I went back to school. I got my MBA at Wayne State and really was looking at the adaptive apparel industry. We conducted about 300 customer discovery interviews. Cause I'm like, well, I'm probably not the only one that is feeling this. And I was just shocked after all of these years that people hadn't been addressing this huge market, right? And as it turns out, there's over 50,000, excuse me, 50 million Americans with disabilities. And, you know, whether it's Parkinson's, a stroke, spinal cord injury, you know, so many illnesses result in a common symptom of loss of dexterity, you know, and just they can't carry out these activities. So that was really when I started to look at some solutions. Great. So talk to us more about this specific one because I just, I'm thinking, why didn't somebody else think about this so much sooner? It seems so simple, but really well thought out. You know, you've gone through everything from the idea to engineering to trademark, patent. You have a patent, right? Patent pending. Yeah. So, you know, it's the, the product is called Buttons to Button. And it is, um, it's a it's, it's simple solution. And I'm going to show everybody right now our packaging. And the idea is these are sold in sets of 10. And it's a way for people to, and I'm going to show you, um, attach 
one part to the button. It just clips on. And this is a no sew machine washable transferable solution. So it's really hard to see, of course, on a video. And so I do recommend you guys go to our website, buttons to button.com. But one part connects to the button, and then the other part just clips over or through the button hole. And um, that way you can convert your shirt into a magnetic closure and it just restores independence. It allows people to wear clothes that they've accumulated over a lifetime that express their unique individual style. Um, I'm also a bit of a, a sustainability um, uh, entrepreneur, I guess you could say. And so instead of having to go out and buy new clothes, now if somebody suffers from a stroke, they can return home, wear their own clothes and regain that kind of level of normalcy as they struggle through these new physical challenges. So um, it was, it's been a, a really exciting journey. Um, we're probably on our third year, as I mentioned, through the MBA process, I was able to do the business development side of it and kind of really do the due diligence of looking at how big is this market? What are the solutions? I mean, what is the competition? Right now, you know, there are shirts that you can buy with magnets that are sewn into the lapel, but they're pretty expensive, anywhere from 65 to $100. Um, and you have limited assortment. There is a button hook that is really kind of that traditional, that's what most people will use, but it's not very functional, especially if you have hand tremors, you have to, you know, thread a needle. I mean, picture a potato peeler, right? You have to thread that through the button hole, hook it to the other button and then pull it back through while you're looking in a mirror. And so again, from a time standpoint and just frustration, it's, it's not an ideal solution. So I was shocked, buttons to button. The name stems from a Jack White song. If you're familiar with the White Stripes, we're based here in Metro Detroit, and um, there's a song called The Hardest Button to Button. So that's where the name comes from, and it's been awesome. We were fortunate um, as my courses kind of were coming to, not, not an end, but it's just, I, I love how we kept getting green light, you know, my professors were like, well, that must exist. And so the first thing, you know, when I would explain this like solution to them, they're like, oh, that has to exist. And everybody would start searching for it. And there is one company that has um, a temporary magnetic button for men that can't single-handedly button like their cuffs or the top button, but it's not machine washable. And so while our product does have to be installed by a caregiver, somebody with dexterity, um, it's once it's on, it's machine washable. And so the other um, finding was that our customers said, well, we want it to be transferable. So that put a kind of a, an engineering um, conundrum on it because for it to be sturdy enough to withstand the wash. And so it kind of snaps on like Tupperware, if you can imagine that, it just clips over the button and the part that clips through the button hole, it snaps into place. And so the, this way people can change out for seasonal appropriateness. I mean, we live in Michigan, so you can wear your flannels in the winter and then you know change it out to a short sleeve shirt in the summer. So it's, it's exciting. And so we were able to go through the Centropolis Accelerator. It's part of the Lawrence Tech University Build for Scale program. And that helped me actually build the physical product. It put us in touch with um, suppliers that were willing to work with an entrepreneur, which is not an easy feat. These suppliers are used to working with the big three automotive companies, you know, getting massive orders. And, and so, you know, we can talk a little bit about funding this. That, that was that has been ultimately my biggest challenge, of course. I don't happen to be independently wealthy with deep pockets. And so, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know this, I mean, there's always three balls that we're juggling. The business development, 
the sales and marketing, you know, who's going to buy this, how do we reach our customer? And then of course the product development side of it. And I guess I forgot, maybe there's a third one as well then, um, funding, got to fund it because without the sales, you know, you, you have to, um, plastic injection molding. I always joke around, you know, give me a couple yards of fabric. I can sew you a wedding dress, no problem. But even though this is for apparel, I really had to then get a second degree in metallurgy and understanding magnetism and how we could maximize pull force um, and then uh, plastic injection molding. It's, it's, it's a whole new world of engineering. So it's been exciting for sure. Oh yeah, I mean, just the learning curve um, out of necessity, but also I know that most entrepreneurs are just genuinely curious. So I think that I hear that from you when we talk because we've known each other for a few years and um, every time we talk, there's, there's, um, there's definitely a level of excitement of here's what I just accomplished and at the same time, and here's my roadblock. And it's, that's what I love about you and what I know that all entrepreneurs have been through. I'm almost tearing up like out of laughter because I, it's just so relatable. I mean, every time we're like, yeah, we got this and we, we've accomplished this and now. <laughs> <laughs> that we need to get through. So, and I know you've been through the ringer with all of that. And so talk a little bit about the funding when you hit that wall of, because that growth, um, and I'll, I'll, I think it, it's relatable to the book, um, No Man's Land. Have you read that by Doug Tatum? Not yet. So thank you for that recommendation. Yeah. Oh, totally. Um, I really hope he's on my bucket list. I hope I can get him on this, uh, on a show because yeah. he's, uh, wow. He, it, that book, it's all about the messy middle in order to grow and get to the next level. You do have to think about, you've got systems, you've got financing, you've got to know your purpose. You've got to keep that energy alive and that entrepreneurial spirit while at the same time really digging into the reality of the business, understanding your numbers and, and really calculating the risk um, of the growth. How is it going to affect you personally? At the end of the day, we're all human. We're all just, you know, a person with a dream and sometimes we want to put it all out on the table, but there are huge risks. So talk a little bit about that part of all of this. Well, and that's um, a great point because, uh, you know, I have a very small team um, and my chief innovation officer, James Murtha, he was in a tragic mountain bike accident out in Colorado, but, um, and he lives independently with quadriplegia. And when I met him during my customer discovery work, um, sorry, it's just, he's the one that really inspired me to look at beyond just dressing. Um, and he inspired wearology and the importance of being able to carry out activities like opening a door or getting a drink of water. I mean, these are like fundamental needs for survival. And so um, it's people like that, that help me persevere. Sorry. Don't apologize. <laughs> um, a real piece of this. Yeah. So that it's, you know, I never knew it would be so hard to help people. Um, I always worked for companies, right? And then I will say, while I was raising my kids, I, um, you know, I, I was a stay-at-home mom, but I also founded a nonprofit. So I had experience in launching it. I guess I've always kind of had that scrappy entrepreneurial like um, mindset, and just I see a problem, I don't see people addressing it, and so it's like, oh, well, I can do this, you know, no problem, and and it, and it is why I went back to get an MBA so I could be more effective, right? Because like you said, you got to understand your risk, you have to mitigate that with um, how you are going to succeed, and if you don't have a pretty clear path, then 
it, it's not it's not worth that risk because at the end of the day you got to pay your bills you got to support your family right so um you know i am not a gambler <laughs> so i have been very cautious. I would say I'm the one that kind of gradually wades into the water. I don't jump feet first. And so I kept getting green light. As I said, like, you know, we did the price sensitivity analysis. We did, we talked to end users. We partnered with end users. And is this a helpful solution? And, you know, we kept this particularly like occupational therapists who see the full gamut of disability and they, it's their enthusiasm and excitement that were like, yeah, this is great. This is such a better solution than that button hook because it just doesn't work. So with these, um, you know, th that support, we, we keep plot plotting through. Um, but as you mentioned, you know, I've given up not just an opportunity to, you know, graduate, get a job and, you know, secure some income, but I've, I've given up on, um, you know, three years of income now as a startup. Um, and so that's been really, really a, a huge gamble. And yet I know at the end of the day, because we've done the, the legwork and we know that this is gonna help people that I, I keep persevering. Now, the, the hurdles, you know, there's just so much that that MBA does not prepare you for. And when you actually have to go through and, you know, file a utility patent, um, I did hire an attorney for that. And as, you know, your original question was like, how do you fund this? So grants, you know, the SBDC, the Michigan Small Business Department has been really supportive. And that's how we were able to actually acquire our first um, injection mold. It's a steel mold cavity. But you know, I didn't know enough to ask the right questions. And so I strongly encourage being scrappy and interviewing as many people as you can and experts in the field. You know, we hired a, a magnet specialist because you only know what you know. And so by talking to other people, you can kind of hopefully <laughs> avoid some of those um, pitfalls and that can eat up a ton of cash quickly. And uh, the other um, way we've kind of managed is through pitch competitions. I was able to win two pitch competitions through Michigan Women Forward. And then there's a great um, incubator in Grand Rapids called Start Garden. And we won out of, I think they had 700 applicants and we were able to be selected one out of 20 to compete. And then we, oh, I'm sorry, one out of a hundred. And what I liked about their particular, um, it wasn't your typical stand up on stage and do like a song and dance and you got five minutes to show what you got. They actually had you set up your, trade show. It's basically, I use that time to set up what our trade show booth would look like. And so we kind of put a spin on it and we set up a closet because the point is, is you can wear your shirts. And so I really liked their format of a pitch competition because we were able to actually use really valuable dollars and time to get us prepared for our trade shows. And then we won um, so we were one out of 20 to win $20,000, which is a huge chunk of cash for a startup. And then we were ready and we started our first trade shows um, just this past fall. And we were able to go and manufacture our first thousand sets of product, which um, right here in Michigan. Um, and so they're amazing products because they were manufactured by um, an automotive supplier. And so they're beautiful. And that's, you know, it can, at the end of the day, like we want people, just like you put a watch on, most products that are designed for people with disabilities look like they come out of a rehab site. And, and everybody wants to be able to look and feel their best and not look like they're going to the gym. So we were really excited about it. Yeah, well, and you think about, yes, there's a problem you're solving with helping people button their shirts, their dresses, whatever apparel, 
but there's what is really the root problem that you're solving? How would you articulate that? Because it's deeper than that. Yeah, no, it, it's refining. It's helping people regain their dignity because, you know, like my mom, the ripple effect, there's 105 million caregivers that are impacted because they spend anywhere from 14 to 34 hours a week tending for a loved one, and that's unpaid. And so that relationship went from being a wife and a partner and a lover to that of a caregiver is a tremendous jump in her responsibility. And so it wasn't just for my dad in having that, um, you know, ability that he was like the bread earner of the family, right? And so when you lose that ability to take care of yourself, let alone the rest of your family, um, it's, it's damaging, you know, it's mind, body, and spirit, right? And so, you know, again, it's, it's a simple solution, but it's pretty transformative. And we have a whole pipeline of products that are currently under development. Um, you know, we have a pant adapter that's coming out because people have said, geez, Gina, the only thing that's preventing me from changing out my own catheter or letting me make sure that I don't have an accident so I can go to the bathroom fast enough because I can't get the button undone is a pant button. And so, you know, we know that there are really specific needs, but, you know, we are looking for um, we're looking for partners. Uh, you know, I have James who's amazing and has really helped, um, keep me motivated and going. Um, we have interns that help. I have some really strong advisors that help us kind of navigate the professionals and where we can go. Um, but you know, we are looking, we're building our team slowly. Um, I have a great sales manager now and um, a social media marketing and branding um, manager, but you know, we're, we're applying for grants. Um, and then, you know, just as we see opportunity, you know, we are available on Amazon, which is exciting for us, but you know, then COVID hits, you know, and we, did, we don't have to spend a lot of time on that. But again, these are, these are real. And I know that I'm not the only entrepreneur out there experiencing these roadblocks. Um, so, yeah, but you know, with each of your, um, your roadblocks, there comes innovation. And I think that's what sparks the excitement and the relatability for all entrepreneurs. And, you know, at this time, and I've said it before in my various episodes here, um, my intention is to inspire. I want to keep us all going during this time, but beyond this. So, okay, this is the new normal. How long will it last? We don't know, but here's where we are. Hopefully we're at the point of all accepting it. You know, I'm a single mom of four getting ready to um, homeschool again. It has been announced. We're doing that through October. I become a one room schoolhouse for four boys of ages, you know, six to 14 while running a business and working out of my home and managing my team and, 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 right? We all are going through this. So let's stick together and help each other out. And that's why I wanted to bring you to the table because I knew your story could inspire, um, hopefully not just other entrepreneurs, but people who want to buy this product and make their, whether it's their patients or their loved ones' lives better. And I want to help take you to the next level, Gina, because I really believe in you. And I think that the root cause of, you know, solving the problem of keeping people's dignity, um, you know, inspiring them to wake up every day, that's deep. That is so important. It helps with the mental health. I mean, imagine these people who are isolated during this time yeah. and having to deal with you know, the crippling effects of whatever disease or whatever their ailment. Um, I just, I, I just, I can't imagine um, the struggle for them and, and their family members. So, and COVID does add an extra layer of stress. And so I, I just think that you are one of the saints on earth and I love your innovation and I'm glad you felt inspired to create this. Um, 
And I'm really grateful that you've been on the episode today. Um, so one of the things you mentioned that you need, we need to find you some more distributors. We need to let more people know about this product. And so you are on Amazon. If somebody searches buttons, number two, button, buttons to button, they'll find you that way? Yeah, um, Amazon, and here's a bit of advice um, with Amazon. If you are contemplating on selling through that path, which, you know, I think it is important depending on what your product is. You know, we have a consumer product versus a service. And so a consumer product, you know, there's a couple things um, with Amazon. You want to make sure that you have your trademark registration approved. And that enables you to have a brand marketing status so that you can upload videos. And why that's important for us is we have a magnetic product that people, it's a first to market product. So people aren't searching for it. So on Amazon, it's really important that we have video and so people can actually physically see it because in a two dimensional picture, people think maybe we're selling a shirt. They're not quite sure. So get that brand registry first and the US Patent Trade Office is amazing. If you call them, they will walk you through how to do that. I spent hundreds of dollars on a trademark attorney and they kind of let me down. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and, and they set me back almost six months on getting that trademark registration. So I launched before because I wanted to be there when we actually had physical product. But now that we have it, you know, it's going to be a game changer. So if you search buttons, number two button, magnetic shirts or something, you know, add magnetic shirt buttons because that'll help you find us on Amazon or just go to our website and we're you know doing some amazing things we're partnering with foundations where we know our product will help their um, followers so whether it's with the arthritis foundation Christopher Reeve foundation um, the spinal cord association and um, it's the 30th anniversary of the American Disabilities Act. And so we're partnering with them this month and we'll donate $5 to their organization and give you $5 off your purchase if you go directly to our website. So it's buttons to button. Um, but, and, and give me, you know, give me a call. Cause the pro, you know, the, the great thing about us entrepreneurs is since we've all gone through this, we have great support. Just like you're giving me advice or in, in context, you know, you know who you work with and who's going to, at the end of the day, not let you down. And so it's, you know, how can we serve you is typically how I like to start out my conversations because, you know, we want to help each other and that's how we build a great strong community. And, and then you don't have to, you know, navigate that yourself, you know, go with what's tried and true and save yourself some time. That's great advice. And, and I'm going to leave it there. I think that's awesome. I will put in our description on YouTube um, all the, the web address, the keywords, and, and more description of what you do and, and how to find you. Um, so I do hope that this broadens your network. I want to thank you so much for sharing your story. I love the vulnerability. I really think that the passion shines through. Um, so thank you, Gina. I really appreciate you. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Rochelle. This has been awesome. Appreciate it. Thanks for everybody who's listening. Thank you, Gina.